Hello, I'm Tobel. Thank you for joining me on another video in our X4 Foundations tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be covering the all-knowing, all-powerful galactic map. This is accessible by pressing the M key, or if you're on your main screen, you can also hit Escape and click on the little icon. So before we get too far into this, I want to make sure we're kind of looking at roughly the same information. If you happen to have these boxes here that tells you Argon Wharf, the name of any station, and the wares that it buys or sells, you can turn that off by clicking on the little trade filter button up here in the corner. That's going to make that go away. If you have this list of things here, you can click on the filter icon to minimize that list. If you have a giant legend out here, you can click on the legend. But since we want to know what's on the map and what we're looking at, let's go ahead and click that legend icon. I love this because it does give you information about whatever you're happening to look at right now. So we are in a uh, sector and we are in some red tiles. If you check the legend, that'll tell us that we are in a region that has some minerals to it. So if we look around, we'll probably see asteroids. Uh, so if you have any questions about, you know, either, you know, what does this icon mean right here? What is this? This is actually our old ship that I'm currently uh, just sold in our Let's Play. But we can take a look at this and see that, oh, it looks like the transporter icon. So you'll start to learn these as you go. The That's kind of amusing. I don't think uh, our fighters actually extra large. Perhaps they're because they come from a capital ship. Either way, that's okay. Uh, so we're going to minimize the legend here. And I want to talk to you about some of these different tabs that you see on this side of the map. The first tab that normally comes up by default is the object list. This shows you what is currently at your current zoom level, right? So this is the zoom level. We're zoomed in this far. So it's going to tell us everything that we can see on the map as is. This doesn't mean there's no ships at all beyond this. There could be a ship right over to the side of the, the area here, but we can't see it because we're not zoomed out. So as you can see, we see a bunch of other ships. We see, yes, sir, that's my baby, which is a transporter. We also see any stations that are in view, which is the Argon Wharf. We also see any owned ships and any owned stations. So I'm going to zoom out, and you'll notice that this expanded to include the microchip facility, or excuse me, microchip factory over here. So again, our zoom level determines how much information is in this object list. If you zoom out far enough, the ships will fade out, and you'll only be left with stations. So as you can see, we don't see, we see little blips, but we no longer see individual unique ship icons, therefore they're off of the object list. However, we do see more stations because we're zoomed out pretty far. And in fact, if you continue to zoom out, I think it shows you quite as much uh, as, as possible on this side. So normally you'll be working pretty close in if you're using the uh, object list. A couple things you can do from the object list, you can directly select your own ships that are in that area, and you can give them orders. We'll get into orders and things like that in another video, but I will briefly touch on it here just a bit. The other thing you can do is right click on your ship and go to information. This brings you down to the information tab, but it does let you quickly see at a glance some basic things like, what am I currently doing with my ship? Who's on board? Do we have any wares on board? Are there any deployables like satellites and also what the weapon loadout or just generic loadout is? So let's go back to the object list and take a look at our freighter. I'm going to click on information here. So we're able to see that because the storage line is not gray, they currently have some wares. I misclicked. Let's go back to that. So they do have some wares. I'm going to expand this out and we can see that they have advanced electronics. So they're hauling you know, the advanced electronics, and they've got their own mission to do. Um, so that's just at a glance. That's some information at a glance. The other thing that's really, really useful, and this is useful for your AI fleet, is the behavior tab over here. So this is under, uh, whenever you're in the information area, you can find the behavior tab. This is telling you a couple things. First off, some basic information about the captain. And there is a formation option here if they're in a fleet. We'll cover fleets later on. You also see their order queue. So these are, for example, if I told the ship I wanted to go over here, it's going to add that in the queue because it has a couple things it's trying to do right now. But it will eventually go to the spot that I indicated. 
there's also the default behavior. This is uh, what is going to happen if this ship has nothing to do. And we have them set to currently auto trade advanced electronics um, in this general area. I was experimenting with distances here. And I think this is max gate distance to buy, max gate distance to sell. We can't really see the text because it's too long. But that's our theory. I haven't been able to <laughs> confirm or deny that yet. So you can change these options here or change the uh, de default behavior overall. And as you can see, they just finished selling an item. So they're undocking. Then they're going to complete what we told them to do. And then they'll go to the default behavior. Down here are sort of some global reactions to certain scenarios. So if your uh, ship is being interdicted by the police, meaning if the police say, hey, you've got illegal goods, what, you know, you've got illegal goods, drop your wares, this tells you how to react. And we have our current trader set to uh, comply. We also have our re response to pirate harassment, which really we shouldn't want to have an attack on our freighter. So we're going to set this to escape. So that means if our trader is uh, attacked, it's going to try to escape. Abandoned ships, if our trader, because they do go around the universe, and all your other ships will be going around the universe too once you have a big fleet, uh, you can tell them to mark it for you on the map or try to claim it if they can. I'm going to set it to mark because I want to be notified if they happen to find an abandoned ship. All right, so that's a quick overview. Again, we'll be going in more depth into that uh, fleet management in a little bit. The other tabs you see here are mission offers. So I'm currently on the same character that I'm using for my Let's Play of X4. So I have a couple more missions than normally would be here. I wasn't able to get these missions until I completed, uh, I think first I had to have 10, re, uh, 10 relation with the faction. And then I was able to unlock a chain which let me start accepting guild offers, guild offers from the Argon, for example. So these are uh, offers of guild missions. They normally have a chain of events that are a little bit longer. So these will have submissions as part of the overall chain. Preemptive offense. We have to hunt for a bunch of Xenon ships. Looks like it's kind of a combat mission, so you probably have to destroy them. Um, we have some other things here. These are starter missions. So these are basically how to start the chain of Argon versus Holy Order or Antigone Trade Guild. And this is the other mission offers. This is more traditional missions that we're used to from X3 or X Rebirth. So for example, these show up as little tiny yellow icons. So this is the satellite repair work mission. If we right click on that, you'll see a brief overview of what the mission is. So we have to repair one satellite to 100% and they'll pay us 150,000 credits. You can accept the mission from there or you can open a full briefing screen which shows you basically the same information. Uh, so once you accept a mission, let's go ahead and take that satellite repair work. Normally your uh, navigation will immediately change because that's the active mission. And you'll also see that this mission is under the mission manager tab. So I have a couple of missions that are open right now. I have a uh, mission called gather intel. This is part of the Argon vs. Xenon chain. Then I also have other missions. And this is the mission I just selected. So you can, in fact, uh, set it to inactive if you want to perhaps, okay, we want to do the uh, deep scan mission instead. And it'll start doing the navigation to that. The final tab here is upkeep missions. Now this is for, if you're not sure, if you have a ship, perhaps you've claimed a ship and you're not sure how to get it going again. The upkeep missions will basically allow you to do things that allow your ship to work automated in an automated, automated way or be navigated by a captain. So we did originally have, for example, an upkeep mission for our elite vanguard, which we've since moved off of, but we had to buy a captain for that ship. So that was the upkeep mission. Finally, the last thing we have on the tab, since we've already covered information, is manage plots. And this is kind of the starter for how to build stations. Um, we're not going to get into too much depth in this video, but just realize that this is basically how you would, if you were interested, uh, this is how you would build a station. So if we wanted to build in this asteroid field or nearby, we would say how big of a plot of space we wanted. We would create that plot, drop it down, and then uh, you could basically look to buy the license for it or continue with your construction. It would turn it into a factory. And I believe, I've not explored too much yet with station crafting, but you can start adding modules to your station there. 
We're not going to do that because at the moment, that's just not something I'm interested in doing in this Let's Play. And um, I think we're going to save construction of uh, space stations for a completely separate video because that is a pretty in-depth topic. So that's just so you know what the plot is. So how do you make use of the map to your most efficient? Well, one way is to make sure that you can look at the map while you're going from point A to point B. I'm going to hit escape a couple times to bring up the main menu. There's a setting that I would recommend you change if you're comfortable with it. It's called maintain speed in menus. I'd set this to on. What this does, and I'll show you here, I'm going to point my ship along the highway and I'm going to start accelerating. If I open my map, you'll notice that my ship is continuing to move even when I'm in the map view. This is pretty convenient if you're trying to go a long distance and you just want to check out your fleet or see what's around you. If you have that setting turned off, what that means is as soon as you open the map, your ship will actually stop. So this is one way to make use of the map while you're moving. So let's say we want to, where's that mission for the satellite? Let's find that, mission manager satellite repair work. Let's set this to active and we're going to come out of our map and press shift A for the autopilot. I'm also going to press shift 1 for the travel mode and I think I'm going to actually point our autopilot towards the objective because they're a little slow sometimes. All right, This is roughly towards the objective here. So we're going to press the M key and look at the map. So this is what I tend to do. If I have a mission that's all the way across the system, or in another sector rather, I set autopilot, and I normally set the travel mode to engaged, and I'll take a look at the map. Maybe I'll check on what our trader's doing. So you are doing what right now? Oh, you're still flying and waiting. So let's close that off. And now he should go back to the default behavior. As you can see, you're still navigating behind here, so you do want to be a little careful because sometimes you can go so fast that you'll wind up smashing into a system or a, um, a uh, station. So we're going to turn autopilot off. And there's our little satellite here. I think this was just a little repair mission. So what we could do here is get out of our space, uh, get out of our uh, seat by pressing Control D and go into our spacesuit. We won't do that right, and I also have a pilot on board that I keep forgetting about who scares me every time she comes out. So we'll go back to the map and take a look at a couple other pieces of information. One thing you can use the map for is to get trade information, and this will be covered more in depth um, in a trading video because that has more details about finding good profits and using the auto trader. But just at a glance, to start looking at trade filters, we can click this button here. And what's this do, what this is doing here is showing you some summarized information. Now I'm going to close this object list. So it's telling you at a glance, every so there's no filters set. If we open the filter list, there's no filters. It's looking at every single wear, every single good that's crafted in the universe. And it's just showing you uh, which wares are bought by stations and which wares are sold by stations. So at a glance, this isn't super useful for you. What you'd like to do is go up here to add wares. And let's add a couple specific things. Now our trade offer display is set to show us a maximum of five in this dropdown. So let's add composites, components, cells, and converters. So what we're going to see here is a filtered view of any of these wares. And it's showing us who buys these wares and who sells these wares. The farther you zoom out, you start to see this this kind of this gray box here. This is grouping stations and telling you that it's grouping the stations in this box. So this is convenient to find the highest and lowest uh, offers. So right now we're showing antimatter converters. Does anyone uh, make these? They do. So it, uh, animated uh, excuse me antimatter converters are sold. At, if we're hovering over here, you can see a little tiny line go from the amount here down to this station. So it's telling us that currently antimatter converters are cheapest at this location and they're sold for 671 credits. We're also seeing that antimatter converters are bought at this station over here for 736 credits. So that's a bit of a profit. The farther you zoom out, the more stations are included in this little filter. So let's clean this up a bit and let's just look for electronics. 
and I'm going to zoom way out. I'm actually going to include the entire main uh, belt here. So you can see our gray box is including every station that we have data on, and I'll, call, I'll explain some of the data in a minute. So it's telling us that with advanced electronics, uh, the highest bidder is willing to buy advanced electronics at 2428 credits, and the lowest seller is willing to sell advanced electronics at 2250 credits. So we're looking at a just under 200 credit profit per item. That's a quick way to, at a glance, find out where you can find some good trade deals. Now we'll get into more trading with automated traders later on, but just in case you're wondering how to efficiently use this filter, uh, this is how you can do it. You can also set some additional information. So if you only have a certain amount of money and you don't want to uh, buy really expensive items, you can set the filter to only show you items that are under a certain amount. So if we have all the wares in the map and we set our max price to like 18, it's really going to only show us some cheap items like uh, solar energy cells and uh, raw materials like ice. So if you're trying to make a very small cost but high volume trade, that's your option there. A couple other things under the filters we're not going to get into too much right now. Uh, I haven't explored the thing filter too much, but I do want to look at some of the other filters down the road. But just at a glance, this is how you can efficiently use this uh, little trade filter to your advantage. Okay, so if you're also wondering why that gray box is there, that would explain it. So we're going to turn off the trade filter and minimize this, and you're back to your normal map. You can give commands to your fleet through this overall map. If we pull up our property owned list, this is the tab that shows you a condensed view of all of the ships and fleets and stations you own. So let's say I wanted to move my elite vanguard that's currently waiting and docked. These are the symbols here. It's waiting and docked. If I want to move him over to Trinity Sanctum, I've got him highlighted here in the list. I'm just going to right click and say, I want you to explore Trinity Sanctum. So that's a really easy way to make quick fleet assignments. In fact, we did do this. Um, well, here's one thing interesting we can do. So we have a ship, and I happen to have a spare pilot. I'm going to get out of my seat. My spare pilot's going to come on and take over. I'm actually going to give my own ship that I'm in an order. And let's see some of the information we said. Do we have any deployables? Information tab, information sub-tab. And we have some satellites. Great, this is what I want. I want our ship to deploy some satellites. So let's click on our discover here. Satellites give you live trade data information. Normally when you fly by a station, if you have a trade computer, Mark 1, it will keep that data live for five hours. So if you swing around the galaxy here in the highway, you'll have the trade data for all the stations that are right off the freeway for about five hours. What I wanted to do is I wanted to see the trade data at all times. So I've started to place a satellite network. And it's really hard to see, but there's a green overlay. I honestly can barely even see it on this one. Here it is. This very faint green line, this is showing us what the range of the satellite is. So any station in this range, we're getting live trade data from. But let's say that we see that the satellite only covered this much, and I want to cover these two. So we're going to click on our Vanguard, and I think this is about the midway point right here. And we're going to deploy satellite. So we have given our ship an order, and it's going to start doing that. As you give orders by right-clicking, you actually will automatically queue them up. So your captain will uh, do them in order that you've given them. And we'll say the same thing. We're going to deploy a satellite here. There's a gap there. We've got a couple satellites here and there. And this is all part of my strategy for trading to uh, have a completely built satellite network. And we'll close the map and watch as our captain takes us around as we can just explore the universe from the uh, lovely uh, the observation deck or, you know, right in the captain's lap. So that's a really uh, basic, I think, uh, look at the map. There's a lot more things you can do in terms of fleet management, but we'll get into that in a different video. But if you're curious about how to use the map, how to make it efficient for you, I think really this is it. Um, do note that a couple of important things, when you're looking at your radar, and because I'm not in the seat right now, I don't have a radar, but normally the radar is right below you in a little view. The radar does show you information that you've gotten uh, that you've received from your scanning your, your passive scanner that information is also on the map 
So if you're doing some long range scanning, you can press M to look at your map and get the same data you're seeing on your satellite or on your radar view. So I think that's it for this video. Uh, I wanted to make a nice condensed video for maps and I hope that was it. If you have any questions about the map and how to make a use of it efficiently, please let me know. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day.